Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about tyrads. What is tyrads? Well, thyroid nodules are very common. Fine needle aspiration, also known as FNA, is one of the most effective ways in determining if a thyroid nodule is malignant and if surgery is required to achieve a definitive diagnosis. However, most thyroid nodules are benign. Not all of them require FNA or surgery. As a result, the tyrads system was developed. This stands for Thyroid Imaging Reporting and Data System and it is a risk stratification system to identify nodules that require further workup. In the tyroid system, one looks at composition, echogenicity, shape, margin, and echogenic foci. The first is composition. It includes cystic, spongiform, mixed cystic and solid, and solid. In cystic composition, the nodules are entirely fluid filled. Nodules that are cystic or almost completely cystic merit no points because they're almost universally benign. Next is spongiform. This is composed predominantly of greater than 50% of small cystic spaces. A spongiform architecture is highly correlated with benign cytology, regardless of its relative echogenicity or other features. Nodules should not be characterized as spongiform solely on the basis of the presence of a few scattered cystic components in an otherwise solid nodule. Next is mixed cystic and solid. This is given one point, and it combines two features from the lexicon, predominantly solid and predominantly cystic. The appearance of the solid component is more important than the overall size of the nodule or the proportion of solid versus cystic components in determining whether biopsy is warranted. Solid material that is eccentric and has an acute angle with the nodular's wall is suspicious. The most concerning composition is solid, or almost completely solid. This is given two points, and it is when entirely or near entirely soft tissue is present with only a few tiny cystic spaces. Although color Doppler ultrasound has not been shown to reliably discriminate between benign and malignant nodules, the presence of flow and solid components distinguishes tissue from echogenic debris or hemorrhage. Inconsequential debris may be identified by layering or motion elicited by changes in patient position. The next feature is echogenicity, and that includes anechoic, hyperchoic slash isochoic, hypochoic, and very hypochoic. The first three are in reference to the thyroid parenchyma, while the last, very hypochoic, is reference to the adjacent strap muscles. The first is anechoic, and that's assigned zero points. This applies to cystic or almost completely cystic nodules. Next is hyperchoic or isochoic, each given one point. Hyperchoic is increased echogenicity, and isochoic is similar echogenicity relative to the thyroid tissue. Hypochoic is given two points, and again, it's in reference to the thyroid parenchyma. But very hypochoic, given three points, is in reference to the adjacent neck musculature. As you can see here, N is in reference to the nodule, and it is very hypochoic, similar to the adjacent carotid artery. This is in comparison to S, which is the adjacent strap muscles. The next feature is shape and that includes wider than tall and taller than wide. Wider than tall nodules are given zero points and these are not concerning. Nodules are assessed on the transverse image with measurements parallel to the sound beam for height and perpendicular to sound beam for width. If the ratio of the width to the height is greater than one, then this is wider than tall. On the other hand, if the ratio of the height to the width is greater than one, this is taller than wide. And this is given three points. This is a concerning feature. Margin is the next feature that should be identified. A nodule's margin, defined as the character of its interface with, with adjacent intra or extra thyroidal tissue, is best appreciated along its anterior border, which is orthogonal to the ultrasound beam. This is facilitated by scanning with the depth adjusted to show the part of the nodule closest to the transducer. Margins include smooth, ill-defined, lobulated, or irregular, and ETE, extra thyroidal extension. Sometimes the term border is used because the thyroid gland lacks a true fibrous capsule. ETE, the most concerning feature, is characterized by frank invasion of adjacent soft tissue and or vascular structures, and is a highly reliable sign of malignancy with an unfavorable prognosis. Smooth is assigned zero points, and it's exactly what it is. Note how this nodule has very smooth, well-defined margins. Next is lobulated or irregular. This is given two points. 
Irregular is when there are speculated, jagged, or sharp angles, even openly in part of the nodule. Lobulated is focal round soft tissue protrusions into adjacent parenchyma that may be single or multiple. If lobulation, angulation, or intrusion of the nodule's solid component into the surrounding tissue is present to any extent, the margin should be classified as lobulated or irregular. Both warrant two points, so it's not that important to distinguish them. Ill-defined is when the border is difficult to discern from thyroid parenchyma. If the nodule's border is not depicted clearly, it is characterized as, as ill-defined and receives zero points for margin. This is not a very discriminatory feature. Last is ETE, extrathyroidal extension. Again, this is when the nodule extends through the thyroid capsule. There's obvious invasion, which highly suggests malignancy. It's important to distinguish if a nodule simply bulges the border of the thyroid gland versus extending beyond it. The last feature to identify is echogenic foci, and that includes large cometal artifacts, macro calcifications, peripheral calcifications, and punctate echogenic foci. Here are large comet tail artifacts. Notice these small echogenic foci with tapered distal components. This is sometimes suggestive of colloid, which is a benign component. These are given zero points. Next are macro calcifications. These are calcifications with posterior acoustic shadowing, suggesting a bulky nature to them. There's a weakly positive relationship with malignancy, so only one point is given. Next are peripheral rim calcifications. These are calcifications at the periphery of the nodule, either complete or incomplete. Calcifications lie along all or part of the nodule's margin. Correlation with malignancy is variable. Some suggest stronger associations with malignancy than macro calcifications. This is why this is given two points. Interrupted peripheral calcifications have also been raised as a possible concerning feature, but there's low specificity. Last is punctate echogenic foci, and these are given three points. These are less than one millimeter with no posterior acoustic shadowing. Sometimes they may have small comet tail artifacts, but they are not as obvious as the larger ones we saw earlier. In the solid components of thyroid nodules, they may correspond to the somomatous calcifications associated with papillary cancers. Thus, these are highly suspicious, particularly in combination with other suspicious features. Of note, small echogenic foci may be seen in spongiform nodules, where they probably represent the back walls of minute cysts. When different types of echogenic foci are present, for instance, macro calcifications, as well as punctate echogenic foci, then the points for each are summed to determine the overall total echogenic foci points. So if there's macrocalx and punctate echogenic foci, we would add one and three points together to arrive at four for this feature. This differs from other categories described earlier, where only a single finding with the highest point value is assigned. Here's a nice diagram identifying a practical approach to thyroid nodules. The nodules outlined in green highlight likely benign nodules, whereas the ones in red are worrying. See the combination of a lot of different features, which warrant either no FNA or FNA. Different thyroid cancers also sometimes have unique features. While not the most specific, here are some common trends. In terms of composition, most thyroid cancers are solid. In terms of echogenicity, they are also usually hypochoic. Of note, anaplastic thyroid cancers are very heterogeneous. As far as the margins are concerned, follicular thyroid cancers are sometimes well-defined, whereas the other ones are more ill-defined. All of them are usually hypervascular. Microcalcifications, those punctate echogenic foci, are seen in papillary thyroid cancer, whereas central coarse calcifications are seen with medullary thyroid cancer. As far as buzzwords, again, microcalx are seen with papillary thyroid cancer, a pseudotestical appearance is associated with follicular thyroid cancer, and invasion of adjacent structures is seen with anaplastic. Because these nodules can be followed up for many years, it is important to determine when there's clinically significant growth. According to these set of guidelines, clinically important growth is defined as 20% increase in at least two nodule dimensions and a minimal increase of two millimeters 
or a 50% or greater increase in volume. If nodule is enlarged to the point where it exceeds the size threshold for its tyrads level, then FNA is recommended, if not previously performed. Growth may be suspicious, but it doesn't reliably distinguish between benign and malignant nodules. You now know a ton about tyrads follow-up for thyroid nodules. Please subscribe for more awesome anatomy and radiology videos.